All right, welcome back to yet another photo manipulation tutorial. We've got a every alpha male wolf's worst nightmare here. Somehow falling asleep on this little island, waters are rising, and you wake up to a giant Datsun staring you down. All right, let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. So I've got this background here and uh, I've got an island. We're just gonna select this tree and go to Edit and Content Aware Fill, depending on which version of Photoshop you're working with. So I guess this isn't really necessary, but what you can do is select or unselect certain areas that you want Photoshop to look at in trying to content aware what you have selected. So you can see the results on the right there. I'm just going to hit apply and hit OK. Hit Control D to deselect. And so it's not perfect, but kind of did a decent job. So what you can do is then combine those two layers, hit uh, holding down shift and then hitting uh, Control E to merge those two layers. And then using the clone stamp tool, I can uh, hold down Alt on the shoreline there and just kind of tidy this little section up a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect because the giant dog is going to be blocking this. And so here is our uh, dachshund. And I'm going to make a copy of him just in case I mess up. It's always a good idea to do that, but I'm not going to show all of this, but I'm just using the pen tool to select, but I'll eventually hit uh, control enter once I uh, connect those, but I will also eventually hit select up top and then modify and feather. And I think I had that at about 1.8. <clears throat> So you just want a uh, kind of fuzzy edge. You don't want the edge to be super sharp because he's, uh, he's a hairy little guy. They've got a little fuzzy edge there. And just created a layer mask. So I'm going to copy that whole layer mask, apply the layer mask on one of those copies, drag that to our main layer. And I'm going to turn that into or convert that into a smart object. Hit Control T, Command T on Mac, and scale this down. Just trying to figure out how big I need this dog. Like what is going to look right in comparison to the scale of that island and the lake and the wolf. So we've got our island here. I'm also going to select it using the pen tool, trying to isolate it so that I can put it in front of the dog. So I'm going to connect that and then hit control enter, get the marching ants. I'm going to modify and then feather feather this a certain amount. And then hit my layer mask down towards the bottom there. So now I can put the dog in between. For some odd reason my tree is back. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Probably using the uh, copy of that background. So I later then re-content aware that tree out of there. I'm going to hit a layer mask on uh, the dog. I'm going to try to figure out where this dog is going to be up to as far as the water. So I'm going to go into my brush settings and I'm going to have a somewhat hard brush. 
and using black again on a layer mask because black conceals holding down shift so you can get a straight line and essentially covering up or concealing that part of the dog so that is where the water will be coming up to so applying the layer mask of the little island creating a new layer on top of the island this will be our grass layer so extra grass got to go into the uh, brush tip shape I have a semi middle of the road softness. I'm going to switch the uh, pen pressure to fade. So trying to create these little blades of grass as I diminish the size of the brush. You can see on the right there that it's it's got this uh, pointed tip, sort of simulating a blade of grass. So you can also download a grass brush, but this is just if you want to sort of do this uh, in a much more controlled way. So I've got a grass color, a little green color, and just uh, trying to reestablish more of a uh, normal look to the edge of this little island. So I'm gonna speed through this here, just applying more and more grass to that little island. You can also create a layer mask on the island and try to uh, let's switch this back to pen pressure go to brush tip shape make sure it's on a super soft brush and I'm trying to get rid of that fringe that happened when I originally selected the island and uh, created sort of a fuzzy uh, selection with the uh, modify feather So this makes that extra grass layer that we put on top of that look uh, even better. So I'm going to select those, holding down shift, hitting uh, control E to merge those two layers. So now the island and that extra grass are one layer. Also going to label that grass hill. I'm going to right click on it and label it a color. So it's green. So now when I've got an enormous amount of layers, I'll be able to find it easily I'll label the dog layer uh, orange here's our wolf and I've already cut that out I think I'm gonna hit control T and then right click flip horizontal I think I had a feather edge of like three but be sure and experiment with that I'm gonna drag a copy of that to our main uh, project area I'm going to make a copy of that, put it down below the background, and then just take the visibility off. I'm going to apply the layer mask of the wolf. And I need his head looking up. So he's looking down right now. I want him looking up towards the giant dog. So I'm going to use the lasso select tool, select his head. I go to modify feather, feather this edge, and then hit control J, command J on Mac. So I've got an extra wolf head because it'll make a copy of whatever I had selected. So I can hit control T on that wolf head and hover over one of the corners and rotate it. I'm gonna rotate this up as if he's looking at the, the dog. So we've got some issues obviously with the original wolf head there. I'm gonna select it, put a layer mask on it and uh, using a black brush I'm going to get rid of that extra ear. But there's a little bit of a seam, obviously, with uh, the head having tilted. So I'm going to create a layer mask on the head, make sure I've got a super soft brush, and using a black brush, going to go in and reduce the opacity and try to get rid of this seam 
so that it blends in with the original neck area. You can see we've got some issues with that original wolf nose, mouth, and chin area. So his neck area is looking good. So I'm going to select the head in the original wolf area with uh, shift and then holding that down, hit control E. It merges those two together and then we can just use the clone stamp tool to get rid of this original nose and mouth chin area of the wolf. So holding down alt to create a selection. Holding down alt again. And it's just a process of covering up that original head. So now we've got our wolf looking up. And uh, create a, or apply, convert, I should say, this wolf to a smart object. Put this above the little island. Gonna hit control T and then scale him down. Trying to figure out how small he needs to be for this to, uh, to look right. Gonna create another layer on top of that wolf. This will be extra grass. So we're gonna put some grass over top of his feet. So doing a uh, similar thing, hitting uh, shape dynamics, converting it from pen pressure to fade and trying to draw on some grass on his feet, so over top of his feet. So selecting some of the colors that are already in that scene. It just kind of helps him sit in that space. So hitting control T, thought he needed to be uh, rotated a little bit. And creating a copy of the dog with the layer mask, putting it underneath the background layer, just as a backup. And I'm gonna rasterize that layer and then apply the layer mask of the dog. Before I make a copy, I'm gonna get rid of this collar because we want him to look, you know, kind of like this rough, wild, giant wiener dog. Maybe he was with his family and they were having a picnic and he got away from his family and, you know, nature took its course, but we don't want the collar on his neck. He either would have grown out of it, obviously, or, you know, it doesn't look like a wild wiener dog um, that's gotten to be, I don't know how tall. How tall do you think he is? He's a good 20 feet tall, something like that. I don't know. But just using the clone tool to get rid of this collar And I'm gonna make a copy of that, so Control J, and this will be the dog reflection. So I'm gonna hit uh, Control T, right click, flip vertical, and drag that underneath. Kind of zoom in here, and then holding down Control, you can kind of get that fine touch to bring that reflection right to where it should meet. And then you can obviously reduce the opacity. So in doing that, because there's already a layer of that lake, you've got those ripples, but you can go to filter, distort, and ripple. This is kind of like a, a lazy man way of doing this ripple. You could do a search for displacement map, um, which might be more accurate, but we're gonna just do it this way. 
which I think will be fine. So it creates a little bit of a ripple, doesn't look great, but you can also select the uh, smudge tool and then go in here with a certain amount of strength, and just test it out. And you're just trying to mimic what the water is already doing and creating a ripple uh, with his reflection. You wanna create smudges going to the right and then smudges going to the left. And then I uh, created a layer mask for that reflection. And I'm gonna, using a black brush to conceal some of that reflection, it will then reveal some of that um, reflection of the island because that would be over top of the, the dog reflection. So we're going to reveal most of this, bring it back to how it looked originally. And then you can go to uh, filter blur and then uh, Gaussian blur. And I really didn't put that much of a blur on this. Uh, so it was a fairly low number, just didn't need that much of a blur. You're really just trying to mimic or copy the look of the reflection of that island because the refle reflection of the island is legit. We're just trying to fake it with the dog. So I'm gonna apply that layer mask of the uh, dog reflection, create a new layer mask and using the gradient tool, just experiment with this. You could also do this with just using a brush. As long as you have a layer mask, using black and white, black conceals, white reveals. But using the gradient tool allows you to do this in a perfect uh, calculated way because you should have a slight fade out of that reflection as it goes down towards the bottom of the screen screen in comparison to right when the dog uh, is hitting the water. So I've got a copy of the wolf. I'm going to hit control T, flip vertical. So there wouldn't be much of a reflection because that, that island is taking up so much space, but there would be a little bit. You'd be able to see his feet. So putting that wolf reflection in there and just basically doing the exact same thing I just did with the dog reflection, putting in a little bit of a distort, reducing the opacity. So same thing going to filter, distort and ripple. So creating a curves adjustment layer on the dog. I'm going to clip it to only affect the dog. And I'm going to reduce the exposure of the dog to create some shadows. So once I've got that down to a certain level, I'm going to hit control I command I on Mac to basically hide all of that reduction and exposure. And then using a white brush, white reveals. So that's what it would do if the opacity was basically a hundred, but I'm going to reduce the opacity, reduce the flow with a white brush to reveal some of what we've concealed with that darkening of the dog. So there'd be some certain areas that would be uh, slightly in shadow because we're assuming the um, sun is coming from the upper right corner of our image. So like the backside of his tail would be uh, slightly darker, so a little before and after there. So applying another curves adjustment layer to only affect the dog. and going to create some highlights. So I'm gonna 
Create some highlights on this dog so he's a little bit blown out. And then on that uh, layer mask, I'm going to actually label it highlights and I'll label the other one darken. So I'll probably go back to these and make minor adjustments. It's the great thing about these adjustments layers, these adjustment layers, you can go back to them. So I'm gonna hit Control I on those highlights of uh, hidden those and with a white brush, showing you what it can do if it's at 100%. Uh, we're gonna reduce the opacity of the brush and just reveal a little bit some of the areas that would be hit by the sun coming through those trees. So putting some highlights on his back, there'd be a little bit of a highlight of light coming through to hit the uh, right side of his tail, that underside. I'm gonna create a uh, new layer. This will be our sun layer. So you could really apply this, create this at any point. So I'm gonna select a sort of bright orange yellow color. And with a super big, super uh, soft brush with 100% opacity and flow, making sure I've got a uh, soft brush there and just hitting once in that upper right. And then obviously reducing the opacity So creating another adjustment layer. This will be a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Gonna crank up the saturation just to be able to see what color we've got. And gonna select a nice orange yellow sun-like highlight. And gonna hit uh, Control I to invert that. I'm also gonna, before I mess with that, create another hue saturation adjustment layer. Hit Colorize and trying to find a color that mimics all of those colors around the dog. So all of that yellow green and just gonna apply a little bit of that layer. So I'm going to reduce the opacity to nothing and increase the opacity just a little bit because there would be a little bit of that color reflected onto the dog, but it would be pretty subtle. So there's your before and after. But going back to that uh, sun highlight hue and saturation adjustment layer. start to reveal some of that color, that yellow-orange, that would be hitting that side of the dog as highlights as the sun uh, comes through the trees from that upper right. So there'd be some hitting his back, there'd be some uh, hitting that right side of his tail. So creating another adjustment layer and I forgot to clip it to only affect the wolf. So this will be creating our shadows on the wolf. So I'm going to hit Control I to invert that, to hide all of that, and then a white brush to reveal some of that, uh, some of those shadows. So that's what it would look like if I had my brush at 100%. So creating another adjustment layer. 
It's via hue and saturation adjustment layer, trying to mimic that same sun highlight that we applied to the dog. And of course, gonna hit Control I, Command I on Mac to hide all of that. And with a white brush, that's what it would look like if I had 100% the opacity. But just gonna come in here and try to reveal just a little bit, be extremely subtle, a little bit of that color of the sun hitting the wolf. I'm going to create another curves adjustment layer on the dog. Felt it needed more highlight. So I'm gonna crank that up and hit Control I to invert it with a white brush going in here and just revealing a little bit more of like an extreme highlight of where that sun is hitting. So creating an adjustment layer on that hill, that little island, clipping it to only affect the hill and reducing the exposure of that to create some depth, create some shadows on that little island. Hitting Control I to hide all of that with a white brush, just going in here and a fairly low opacity, trying to reveal some of that darker side of the island. So created a, another layer here. This will be the shadow. So it's on a separate layer. This will be the shadow for the dog on the lake. You can also create a layer mask on that shadow to conceal some of it. So I've got a black brush now. If you think you've overdone it, you can uh, conceal some of that of what you've done just so it's, it's a little more subtle. So selected the actual layer, not the layer mask and applying more shadow to the right side of the dog. So creating another layer And this will be our ripple layer. So what you can do is actually select one of the more brighter sections of the lake and then maybe drag it up so it's even brighter. I think I just wound up using white, but this is a good starting point. So on a separate layer, trying to create sort of that contact point where there would be some white, you know, rapids, white ripples of where the dog is hitting. So going to highlight. So using at this point, I think close to white, putting in some dots and then uh, using the smudge tool to sort of get rid of that sharpness. And also putting some more ripples here and there uh, throughout, you know, that reflection. Creating another layer. This will be our uh, sun rays. And then using the polygonal lasso tool, I'm gonna first uh, create a, uh, or select a sort of bright orangey yellow sun color. So that is our foreground layer. And then using the polygonal lasso tool, I'm gonna go ahead and create some shapes as if it's sun rays coming through those trees on the right. So I'm going to hit shift backspace and fill with foreground color. Go ahead and do this a few more times. And then once those are selected, hit control D to unselect. I'm going to create a blur. So this is filter and then blur and then Gaussian blur. I'm going to blur these rays a little bit. and reduce the opacity considerably. And 
and go ahead and apply a layer mask to that. And using the gradient tool, you could, of course, use just a black brush with a low opacity to try and diminish the rays as they get towards the low right of the screen. And creating another layer on the uh, wolf. This will be the shadow of the wolf. And just painting in a uh, low opacity of black where there should be a little bit of shadow. And going back to one of the curve adjustments for the wolf and uh, contributing to more of a darkening effect. And so within the wolf layer, you can create groups with folders. So I'm gonna add a layer within the group of the wolf so that all of those adjustment layers that are above the wolf will affect this new layer. And this will be more hairs on the wolf just to create a, uh, the look of a better selection of the wolf. So if I select one of these colors and then go ahead and draw out a giant hair, all of that adjustment layers that went into creating how the, the wolf looks now will affect this new set of hairs. So I'm gonna go in, make sure it's set to fade with shape dynamics instead of pen pressure. And go in and just draw in with an extremely small brush with the fade applied more hairs to the wolf. You can also create a layer that is clipped directly to the wolf, but is not an adjustment layer. It's really just you with a brush, in this case with a black brush. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that it is not on fade. I'm gonna select pen pressure. and just painting directly on the wolf. So if the brush were at 100%, this is what it would do, but it wouldn't affect anything else. But we're gonna paint in a much more subtle way, just creating more volume to the wolf, more of a shadow. And then you can create or apply a layer mask to what you've just done to remove some of it with a black brush just so you can get an extremely subtle effect of there being a darkening uh, in certain areas of the wolf. So I've got a new image here. I've got some sort of white water ripples so this is another way of creating those ripples where the dog is contacting the water. I think this way uh, works even better. So I'm gonna select that using the lasso tool, hit Control J to create a new layer, drag it to our main uh, composition. Sometimes when you drag a layer in, it, it drags it to a weird spot. So I'm just gonna uh, move this to the top and hit Control T and scale this ripple down. We can also reduce the opacity of that layer to figure out exactly where it should be. And increase the opacity. I'm gonna hit Edit Puppet Warp. This is in case you're wanting to kind of bring this ripple into more of like a straight look if there's too much activity going on. And then moving these puppet pin points to uh, kind of straighten out that ripple. So you can create a levels adjustment on that ripple 
and I forgot to clip it to, so I'm gonna clip it to only affect the ripple layer. And moving some of these points, you can kind of experiment and see what works. You're trying to basically match how the lake looks. So you can blend that little ripple in there kind of seamlessly. Also going to select the green layer and try to further adjust and match that to our colors that we have already in the lake. And then on the ripple layer itself, you can create a layer mask. And using a black brush, soft brush, kind of get rid of that seam or it has that hard edge. And you can create another layer on top of that. And using a white brush, kind of re-emphasize those little white ripples. I could have just used a black brush on the actual levels layer mask to reveal some of that white, which I will do for the other side, just to show you. But here's another way of doing it, just applying another layer and then applying a white little specks here and there and using the smudge tool to get in there and kind of smudge it so it doesn't look so blocky. But we've got a uh, same ripple layer, but using a, a different lip ripple and hitting control J to isolate that, dragging it to our main scene, hitting, hitting control T to scale that down. So this will be where the tail is hitting. And what you can do is hold down alt, click on the effect icon drag it to the top of your other ripple in between the two layers holding down alt it'll clip it so that's a way of copying the adjustment layer as far as levels from what we just did over to this new layer this new ripple so here's what i was talking about in selecting the mask of the levels layer using a black brush to reveal some of that white water rapid and then applying a layer mask to that second ripple using a black brush super soft to get rid of that seam and you can also hit control T right click and hit warp just another way of kind of manipulating this ripple into the shape you want. So creating some fog, added a new layer. I'm gonna fill that new layer with black with the paint bucket tool. And then I'm gonna go up to filter, render, clouds, and then change the blend mode to screen. Creates these little clouds, they don't look perfect, but I think they'll work for what I'm trying to do. Reduce the opacity. Hit Control T on that fog layer. Reduce the scale. Bring this over. So I'm really trying to create the, the effect of this kind of morning fog rising from the surface of the lake. Created a, or, or applied a layer mask on top of the fog using a black soft brush. Gonna try to get rid of that top seam. So it's looking halfway decent, but also gonna create a new layer, do the exact same thing. So this will be fog two. Fill that new layer with black. Go up to filter, render, clouds. Change the blend mode to screen. Reduce the opacity and hitting control T gonna reduce the scale considerably. This time I'm not gonna stretch it over to fill the entire screen. 
So this will, our fog will be more dense when it's uh, at a smaller scale. Got a layer mask that I applied to that small scale fog and gonna get rid of that sharp edge at the top and reduce it on the bottom. So it's really starting to look a lot more like fog or steam coming up from the surface of the lake. And messing with the layer mask with the black brush to kind of poke some holes in that fog. Gonna also uh, copy that. So control J to copy that entire fog little system and apply it to the other side and reduce the opacity. So there you have it, giant, Dotsoned, intimidating, an alpha male wolf. Anyway, check out the rest of the videos on the channel and uh, let me know how I did, leave a comment. And as always, thank you for watching.